Hey guys, I'm a creature from the vlog, and creatures from the vlog are really tired and have a lot of work. Oh, we're all really tired, and we all seem pretty tired, and we all have a lot of work. That's true. Comments on last week's videos is that I'm glad that Frankie unlocked her video um, from two weeks ago. I love her hair, and yeah, I loved your beginning pose of your last video. It was very sexy. So yeah, and I really liked your art project. Um, Kirsten, you are forgiven. I love that you posted a video like being like, I didn't post a video. It's cute. Um, and Billy, you might wear boxers during your video. Um, my video last week, I was in my undies and I put on a coat so that I could be decent enough to record a video. True story. Uh, so my plan for the next two weeks is that I am taking a final tomorrow. Then I am actually flying to D.C. on Wednesday for Biennial, which is the Union of Reform Judaism's big convention. I'm really excited, and Obama's speaking on Friday, and I can't wait. Um, and that's from Wednesday to Sunday. I actually have a paper due Friday, so I have to somehow write it while I'm there and email it to a friend to hand in. And then on Monday, I have a Hebrew paper, a real paper, and a final I'm taking. So Monday's going to be like a bloodbath day from hell. But then after that, I'm actually done. So I finish on the 19th, but I'm not coming back until the 22nd. So my trick for this video is going to be that I'm going to explain to you guys Shabbat, um, Frankie, observant Shabbat, I should say. Frankie posted on my wall on Facebook a video that Kirsten also commented on from a vlogger they um, view a lot who talked about Shabbat and he got some things right and some things wrong so I'm gonna hook you guys up so you're on the DL. On the... No. No. That is not even the right use of language to post. <laughs> okay. So that you know what's going on. Um, so he was saying Shabbat now, I don't know what Shabbat is, I don't know if it's some kind of she-rabbit, but it's Shabbat, Shabbat, like Shabbat Shalom, hey, yeah, Shabbat. Um, and so the, if you're talking on an observant level, which, I mean, we can talk about how I'm not a traditional observant Jew. But if we're talking on the traditional observance level, um, he was right about Shabbat being from sundown to sunset the next day. Um, and he was also correct, sort of, with the general gist that it's you don't work on Shabbat. And the rules come from the Torah where it says that you should not kindle a fire and it says that you should not, you know, that you should rest like God rested on the seventh day of creation, right? Um, the thing to understand is that then this is interpreted by later rabbis and different, you know, there's some standard like observant traditional Jews agree on everything and there's some things that might be a little more like iffy. So the having other people work for you thing definitely on that level um, and we can also talk about the card game playing which is also sort of on that level uh, ish and only the fire as he said relates now to electronics um, lights computers cell phones all those things would be prohibited on Shabbat um, and that's generally agreed upon and you don't cook on Shabbat and you don't create so you wouldn't do art and you wouldn't write um, when it comes to game playing, which is where the original example that brought the vlogger to talk about this was from, his game so real, um, you can play games, you just can't play games where you create. So I never thought of Sopio as a game where you create, but it is possible that somebody interpreted it that way. I mean, people, like, you can play card games on Shabbat, um, you can play board games that don't involve 
creation. A lot of it depends on how your rabbi, the rabbi you follow, um, says that you should do things. Um, and let's put it this way. When it comes to people helping you, there are a lot of conflicts. So there's this idea that you should not let a Jewish person do something for you that makes them break Shabbat on Shabbat because they are also commanded to follow the Sabbath. But that a non-Jew can do it for you because they um, are not commanded by God to do not one of the chosen people. So a good example of this is the idea of a Shabbos Goy. Um, basically, it is a person that you have do for things for you on Shabbat that you can't do for yourself. Betty has been a Shabbos Goy. Betty, my ex-roommate. Ex makes it sound like we like had a bad relationship. My former beautiful, awesome roommate. Um, when we lived in the castle in a, in a suite, uh, the suite below us, it was a mixed suite of Orthodox and non-Orthodox people, but Jews nonetheless. And one of them wouldn't ask other Jews to do things for her. So she would come upstairs, she would knock on my door, and she would ask if Betty was there. And if Betty was there, I would give her Betty. And what she would have Betty do is she would have Betty turn on her lamp for her so that she could read. Um, yeah. A lot of people have these sort of things on timers, whatever. They'll have all their food pre-cooked. Like, it's not an issue. They're on a schedule that works, and it's not a huge inconvenience to them to not be able to do these things on Shabbat. It's part of the day of rest for them. Um, but some people are not okay with asking non-Jews to help you at all because they think that you should just figure it out yourself and it's not okay to tell to have somebody else do it. Some people, on the, on the other end, will ask Jewish people who aren't observant to do things for them, perhaps not in a direct way, but they will say something like, wow, I wish this light was off so that I could fall asleep, and then you would turn the light off for them even if you were a Jewish person. Um, and, yeah. So it really, there's a fluctuation in observance. It's not all one thing. Um, another thing to clarify is that, like, living with a, an observant person does not mean that you also have to be observant. At least not for most... N let me put it this way. Not for any Orthodox Jews that I've met to my knowledge would they require such a thing. Um, it, there's no, you know, you're not supposed to coerce people to do what you do. It's not really a Jewish value. Um, you can encourage them, but you wouldn't say you can't do that in my house. Um, I don't know many Jewish people would do that. Although, to be fair, there are very, very, very strict communities in Israel that, like, literally won't let people who aren't Shomer Shabbos, observant of Shabbos, like, live in their community so you know there is a variation I think um, for the sort of Jews you would experience in England and in America most Jews you're going to experience aren't of that of an extreme level of observance of Shabbat probably don't observe Shabbat at all actually a majority of them those who do um, observe it in a different way which is how I would categorize myself um, and those who you do meet who are of, like, of more strict observance would not like impose that on other people and aren't like off the wall strict. Final very important note, it does not say anywhere in the Torah that you are going to die if you don't follow Shabbat. That is just not factual. However, there might be um, rabbis that teach that or believe that. That is not um, from the source, put it that way. And I don't know many people who would believe that especially because there is no like there's not a lot of penalty in judaism you know there's no like hell like there is not that uh, you just do it because you're supposed to do it it's not like you don't know what it means really there's not that like sort of heaven incentive it doesn't so i love you all i'm totally out for doing videos next week depending on how you guys feel because we won't all be back together till the end of the week but just let me know Okay, bye-bye.